can see here, we come up, we run it out, we split it so that it distributes a little bit more evenly. There are a lot of different ways you can configure your towers. and We advocate an in-ground sump tank so that your towers can be at ground level and you don't have to hang them directly over your tanks. Um, it just makes working on them a lot easier. It, works deal it makes dealing with them a lot easier. And it makes it a lot simpler to, to remove them and put them in. It also uh, makes it easier to put together your drainage system. Um, and makes it really inexpensive to do so. So the racks that we use are typically made out of two by fours when we're when we're operating on ground level, and um, we've got basically two two by fours running the length here. These are five footers, so you just take a ten foot two by four, hack it in half, and uh, we usually have a two and a half foot span here, cut and screwed into the riser. The riser is about five and a half feet tall, and at the very top we drill a hole and we pound a one inch electrical conduit um, tube through it, essentially. And uh, so we use full 10 foot lengths of conduit, one inch, on one section, and then we'll slide a three quarter inch section of conduit into the end of it and do the next rack three quarter inch conduit. And uh, we'll just do that rack a little bit shorter. And it kind of links everything together and locks it all together nicely, but it's still something, you know, that we can remove when we have to. Um, the uh, bars that the, that the towers hang from then, uh, basically just rest on top of that conduit pipe and um, you can see we run our black poly then on the underside. Lots of this you know it's not pretty but we just zip tie it together because it's really inexpensive. You can use wire, zip ties. If you really want to get fancy and use conduit clamps you can do that too. But we found that uh, these things really don't move once they're in place and uh, you know zip ties work just fine and they're cheap. To irrigate these towers we have a one inch uh, feed line. So this is kind of our, our main feed that runs the length of the greenhouse and uh, for really long runs we'll hack it, cut it in half and we'll do two lines off of the main pump to make sure that we maintain our pressure that we don't have lower pressure at the very end and higher pressure um, you know closer to the pump and uh, essentially we just tee off of this line and uh, you see here we use the expensive uh, hose clamps you guys can use just the crimp style hose clamps if you want, or if you're not running a whole lot of pressure, you can just use a heat gun, essentially, to put uh, the, the poly pipe on the barb fittings. But the, this, this poly tubing is really the, the cheapest way to go. It's really inexpensive stuff. So we just tee off of there. You can see we run our half inch uh, little feed line up. Every little zone that we create, we put a valve on. And this allows us to change the pressure on the zone and uh, choke it down or give it more. The nice thing is we can crank this all the way up and blow everything out because we've got really high pressure. Uh, so it's kind of a nice way to clean everything out from time to time. We run it up to an L and uh, this particular one is a straight configuration. A lot of the times we'll actually run this pipe to the center of the mass, tee it again, and then kind of, uh, you know, spread it out to these other lines evenly. Uh, you put a T in and then run a length on either side of that tee, put other tees in. I'll show it to you over here. This one is basically just a straight configuration that we're experimenting with to see if it's easier because it saves us on a couple of parts and it's a little bit easier to put together. Um, so far it's, it's working just fine uh, this way as well. We'll tee off of this line here and we'll run these lines along the bottoms of our conduits and you can see these are just zip tied up here as well. Off of here we just use a little barb fitting to connect an eighth inch uh, piece of tubing and um, that essentially you know that essentially will just feed the tops of our towers a lot of folks ask about clogging and um, it's not really a common thing usually our problems are air as opposed to uh, air in the lines as opposed to solids you can see there there's some solids coming out uh, most of the solids in our system are small enough that they just get passed right through the tube no problem so for drainage, we just basically have a uh, four inch septic um, drain line. And into this drain line, we run these uh, pieces of gutter. It's a four inch gutter with end caps. Uh, these are about, oh, around here, they're about $4 for a 10 foot section. And these gutter caps, if we buy them in bulk, cost us a buck 50, a buck 60 each. So really it makes your, um, it can make your drain trough pretty inexpensive. We drill a hole in the end, you can see here, we drill a hole in the end of this trough 
and uh, we basically just put a fitting, a threaded fitting. It's uh, I think that's three quarter inch to one inch uh, fitting, and we, then we drill another hole here that's about a one quarter inch, one and a quarter inch hole with a hole saw, and our our troughs just basically rest right in our drain line there. It's a really inexpensive way to do it, and it works really well. I do recommend going with a three quarter inch as opposed to a half inch. It will make your life a lot easier and reduce the amount of times you have a clog. So you'll notice in a lot of our videos that we whitewash our framework and that's just basically to reflect light. Um, we just use a lime wash. It's just kind of a traditional whitewash. It's non-toxic. If it falls in the water it actually kind of supplements the system nutrition. Um, besides that, over here I just wanted to show you how we configured these ones. And again, we had a lot of these on hand so we used them. These aren't always the most economical option, these, these hose clamps. But uh, you can see here, we come up, we run it out, we split it, so that it distributes a little bit more evenly, and we get a little bit more uh, evenness and pressure across the whole mass. And you can see this is a larger mass. We've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We've got five columns on here. Um, so we, we, we want to distribute this, this uh, pressure pretty evenly. We split it, and then we just run our T's off of that split line. So if you're interested in, in towers, uh, check out our store, it's on our website, or uh, if you're interested in larger kind of commercial quantities, we can bring that price down a lot. Shoot us an email and uh, we can work something out. You want to be careful to match the fish to the location, to the environment, to the resources you have available.